Hello everyone, Jonathan here, and welcome back to the next video in the Advanced Laser Defender series. In this video, we're going to start creating a player level up system. And before we do that, I just want to say, if you are one of the five people who has been watching the series up to this point and has watched the last video, I apologize for the wait since the last one was published about two, three weeks ago. I am back. And also, I want to just say a big shout out, thank you to Chimpo Talks Gaming, who left this wonderful comment comment in the last video of the Brick Breaker series. Uh, you really made my night last night. I was so thank you very much for that. And if you're at this point in the series here in Laser Defender, I hope it's going well. And to everyone else watching too. So let's jump right into it. To get started, I want you to start by creating some level up particles. And if you saw that explosion just now, this is the uh, effect, the graphic effect I want to happen when the player ship levels up. So pause the video and see if you can actually create something like this or a particle effect of your design to yourself. So pause the video and give that a go. Okay, uh, welcome back. I have you paused it. If not, uh, feel free to just watch along. So add up, you want to create an empty game object and put a particle system on it. Now I've already designed this just to save time and I'm just going to show you the settings I used. So I gave it a duration of 1 and uh, again you can just see the, the difference here. If it still it goes on 5, it just starts spitting out these extra particles. We don't want that. A duration of 1 second is fine. Start delay is 0, start lifetime, leave that at 1.5, start speed 5, start 1, start size at 1. Most of these settings are the same. Uh, start color, I picked yellow, give it, uh, give it whatever effect you want. Uh, we do want it to play on awake, so make sure that uh, box is checked. Make sure looping is unchecked. Max particles 500. Open up this box, a mission, and you want to click the little plus icon here next to bursts. And that's how we can get all the particles to come out at once and create this nice ring explosion. So you need that burst, and I just set that at 500 to be equal with the max particles. Uh, under shape, the only setting I changed here was instead of emitting from the base, I changed it to emit from base shell. So this is emit from base, and base shell gives it that nice ring effect. You can see the difference. And besides that, uh, the only other th things I did was I added a color over lifetime and a size over lifetime effect, which is similar to what I did with the explosions in one of the earlier videos. So all I did here, I just gave it a nice yellow consistency throughout the whole effect. And in the final frame, I changed the alpha down to zero to make it uh, fade out. And in the first frame, the alpha is left at 255. And similarly in the size, it's just a downward slope, so the particles get smaller as they die. So once you have that particle system created, uh, just don't forget to turn it into a prefab. And uh, if you're happy with it, uh, just hit simulate, see that you like how it looks, and then you can remove it from the scene. Okay, cool. That was for you, Jimpo. Next, I'm go oh, you're going to need a sound effect for this. And I already dragged in the sound effect earlier. Uh, just Which one was it? Oh. Yes, I think that was a sound effect I'm using. If not, it sounds good enough. So just make sure you have a sound effect that you want to use. And if you're using Unity 2D, make sure 3D sound... Or, uh, sorry, if you're using Unity 4, make sure 3D sound is unchecked. It does work. This setting works a little differently in Unity 5. Uh, but Ben created this in Unity 4, so that's just what I'm going along with here. So now, let's think about how we can actually create this level up system. So first of all, you're going to have to open, uh, go to your players folder and open up the player controller script. You're going to be needing that. And you're also going to be needing uh, the score script or uh, score keeper script rather. So do I already have that open? I do not. Don't need enemy behavior. Don't need health bar in this case. Don't need health pack. We're done with all of those. But we do need the score keeper script. Uh, so just kind of go up here. I'll get it from the canvas. And the reason we're going to do this is because we need to think about what's going to be our level up condition for our player ship. Uh, so we're going to start here by adding a couple of variables. Well, first of all, actually, let's go ahead and attempt, before I get even get to that, let's attach our effects. So public game object level up particles and uh, public 
audio clip level up sound save the script and we'll go attach those on before we forget because otherwise I will totally forget as I almost already did go right here I see I can see it's asking for it uh, so go into the prefabs folder drag that those level up particles on here and go into the sounds folder and put the sound effect on as well Okay, now going back into it, let's actually start getting on with creating some useful variables. So now one thing we're going to need is a private integer, or sorry, not private, public rather, a public int array. So put the square, two square brackets, and we're going to call this level up scores required. And then we're going to use a private int called current level, and we're just uh, all, we're going to need more uh, variables than that. But I'm just going to put those two in for now. And it, you can see think about adding a different condition for level ups. Like you could just have if you want to kill a certain number of ships, that could be one criteria. Uh, you'll have to do this tutorial a little bit differently, but in my case, I'm just going to say if we've scored a certain number of points, then we're going to uh, make our player level up. Now, in this case, what I'm going to simply do is I am going to, well, first of all, I'm going to go up here and create a private player controller. So private player controller, player controller, because we're going to need to reference the player controller from the scorekeeper script. Sorry, I forgot I'm going to make this bigger so you can see what I'm actually doing. And player controller equals game object dot find object of type player controller. We've done this a bunch of times. And here in the public void score, uh, this is, whenever we score points, we're basically going to check to see if we've hit the required number of points for a level up. So I'm just going to say player controller. Dot. We haven't actually created a method yet, so this is a wishful method for now. So I'm just going to call it check for level ups, and we're going to pass through our score. And we're going to save that, and it's going to appear in red for now because, as I said, we have not actually created this yet. It doesn't exist, but we will create that uh, very shortly. And by very shortly, I mean right now. So let's just scroll down here, and after uh, recover health, we'll add a new method and call it public void. Make sure it's public. Check for level ups, make sure this is spelled exactly the same way uh, as it, you just spelt it in the previous script. And then we are going to, uh, well, first of all, it's not going to have any arguments. We're going to put int score for passing through that score variable. And now we need to think about how to actually determine uh, what we're going to be looking at here. Like, how are we going to match this up? our current score uh, against a predetermined score for level ups. So if you recall, up at the top here, we created an integer array called level up scores required. And we made it public so we can publicly modify those in the inspector. So let's go back to the inspector, click on our player ship, and go work on the prefab. And we can see that this array has opened up here on the right side of the screen. So this is where you're going to determine how many levels you want there to be. In this case, I'm going to put six. Uh, you can make it whatever you want. Three levels, five levels, six levels, ten levels. For the most part, this is all going to be done by code. So uh, you can make it as many levels as you want. But if you make it past a certain number of levels, you're going to want to make sure your ship doesn't get too powerful. Uh, but six just seems like a good number, so I'm going to use that. And this is going to be the score required uh, to get a level up. Now I'm just going to put very low scores in here for now, and the only reason I'm going to do that is just so we can test it out and make sure it's working okay. Uh, so 500 sounds good, 650, because every player ship I, we kill, I believe, gives us 150 points. So I just kind of want to make sure that every, I will make it every two ships. Uh, 500, 700, 900, 1100, 1300, and 1500. So when we hit these scores, and I will, these will definitely be upped later, but just for testing purposes, I'm going to leave them low, and just to make sure that if we're hitting these scores, our player ship is leveling up. Okay, so back into the code. 
uh, we're also going to need the game to recognize what the max level is. And we can just declare an integer here, call it max level, and say this is equal to level up scores required uh, dot length. So whatever the length of our array is, uh, sorry, no two, no two brackets, but whatever the length of our array is, is automatically going to be determined by code to be our maximum level. Now, uh, we need to think about uh, checking to see if we're actually going to uh, get a level up. So we also created a variable here called int current level, and we're going to make use of that right now. And we're just going to say if current level, which by default is set to zero, uh, so if current level is not equal to the max level, and you do an and condition by writing two uh, and signs, and score is uh, greater than, sorry, less than, greater than, uh, whichever that side is, uh, level up scores required. This is our array. Sometimes when you put arrays in if statements, they don't seem to be recognized right away. I don't know why that is. Uh, so int level up scores required. And in here, we are going to check to see the current level. And basically what this is saying is uh, if we're not at the max level and if the score, if our current score is greater than the whatever we've put in that array, then uh, we're due for a level up. So this is just an automated way of handling it. And I'm going to write another method in here, another wishful method that we haven't created yet. I'm just going to call it handle level ups. And it's going to appear red because it doesn't exist yet, but that's okay. And I'm just going to put an else if in here and say uh, if current level is equal to the max level, then we're just going to print out and say debug.log player is max level. And now I have, I, I, I want to go test this out quickly, but to do that first, I'm going to have to just create this handle level ups method. So let's do that quick. Okay, it's no longer in red. Let's go check to see that nothing is broken. Okay, nothing is broken. I'm just going to open the console. Oh, I have to print statements in there from something else. So I should probably get rid of those because it's going to get a little messy otherwise. So it's, it's a little hard to see if we're leveling up right now, and the reason for that is because only the targeting factor is uh, right now something will pop up in the console if we've gotten 1,500 points or more. I'm just going to get rid of some of these print statements, though. Uh, don't need to print the slider value. Don't need it to say scored points. Just to get getting a little messy. So let's get rid of some of those. Okay, and let us, actually I should have done this before, but we're going to say in current level plus plus, because the first thing we need to say is if we've leveled up, we need to increase our current level by one. That makes sense. And uh, now we need to instantiate that game object to the level up effect. So we're going to say game up level up effect equals instantiate level up particles. We've already attached those. We're going to just instantiate them at transform.position. We're going to do criterion.identity and as game object. Okay. And then the other thing we want to do is also add in our sound effect. So we can say audio clip dot, whoops. Audio source for audio clip. I always mix these two up. Audio source dot play clip at point. Uh, what did we call our audio clip? Level up sound. Very creative name. Level up sound. At transform.position, and I'm just going to close that off. I'm not going to put a volume control in there. Okay, let's test that out one more time. There we go. Okay, 
So I'm a terrible player, apparently. I died, but we can see I did level up twice there. Hey, it's Jonathan from Half an Hour Into the Future. Uh, after finishing recording this video, it got way too long, so I'm splitting it up into two. I'm going to cut this part right here, and we'll just pick up right where we left off in part two of the player level up system. See you shortly.